Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I'm going to be talking about my worst books of 2023. So, in 2023, I think I read a good chunk of books that I actually liked, but unfortunately there were still a couple books that I either DNF'd or just couldn't enjoy at all. And so, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So I only have a small selection, luckily, of books that I just like, did not like at all. And I'm going to tell you about them. So the first book I have on this list is The Final Strife. When I tell you guys I did not like this book, I did not like it. I think I gave it two stars. I think that's the lowest rated book I've had this year so far, maybe. Like, for me, reading the synopsis of this story, I feel like reading the story was not what I read in the synopsis, if that makes sense. Also, I hated the romance of the story. I thought it was so weird. I felt like it, I felt like the author trying to convince us that this was a romance was so far out of left field because I feel like the two characters did not mesh. I was like, these personalities do not mesh well together. I do not ha know how you are trying to convince me that they are in love. There's no way. I felt like the storyline didn't make sense and I feel like like certain aspects just were boring and it just didn't work for me as a fantasy at all. I remember being so angry reading this because I just felt like what I was expecting was not what I was given and again this was just based on my I guess interpretation of the synopsis. And I feel like if you're going to make this a sapphic fantasy, I feel like you could have done a better job. So next I have A Winter's Promise. So this was so boring. I cannot tell you. Like, I, I read the book and I cannot tell you what it was about. I can't tell you what happened. I can't tell you why you should read it. Like, can't tell you any of that. Can't tell you what the point of the plot is. All I can tell you is that I think the main guy was autistic. And I, I feel like that's... That was decent representation, but at the same time, it didn't make sense. And I think this was supposed to be some type of Pride and Prejudice retelling or something like that, but with, like, fantasy. But it just didn't make sense because, like, the guy, he literally picked her up, dropped her off at his family's estate, and then dipped. He hasn't seen her since. And so for him to be like, I'm in love with her, so I have to stay away from her. So you met her for five seconds. How did you fall in love with her that quickly? Even Mr. Darcy had to meet with the girl like he met with he met with what's her face and then danced with her the whole entire night so then he fell in love with her that i could understand more than this five second drop off all right next we have kingdom of ash by sarah j Moss. when i tell you i finished throne of glass and got to this last book and i was so disappointed <laughs> i was like sis you mean to tell me you built up this entire series to do this, to, you built this up with this girl, with Selena, being the savior of the, the whole entire damn world. And then you get to the last book and she does this? Make it make sense. Also, this is a little bit of a spoiler, so if you don't want to go on, can, if you don't want to hear it, go on to the next book. But the fact that you made... The true savior, a girl that nobody met until Tower of Dawn and the novella series, is wild to me. Why would you make a pregnant girl the savior of the world? When you had Selena right here, who had all of, like, why did you give Selena all of this power? They were like, oh, she's about to be our saving grace because she has this cannon power inside of her. And then the last book, she loses it. What do you mean? You just lost your your weapon. You just lost your greatest player in the entire game. And then you were like, oh, the pregnant woman's got it. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I hate it. I hate it. it. It was just so bad. I was so mad. Because I was like, what? Then why did we spend this whole entire series watching Selena literally suffer with this power? Like, she had to fight people off, she had to stop people from killing her, she got kidnapped, she was traumatized. Why did we go through all this? Because she had this ability, because people were so afraid of her, for her to end up losing it before the big battle. I don't get it. It didn't make sense. And I'm angry. As you can tell. About it. That was a bit of a spoiler. I'm so sorry. Then, 
We have another one by Sarah J. Maas, A Court of Thorns and Roses. Y'all, you guys told me this was good. So many people have said this was good. Where was the good? Because Feyre, what is that? Who is this? Because why, like, why, why? Why is she the family caretaker? Like, she's ha she's taking care of her entire damn family, the two sisters and the useless father. This useless father. The, all, the whole family is just useless. So she's out there hunting, hunting people, hunting food, getting, getting all the things for them to survive. And then she gets to this fey castle and she doesn't, she's not suspicious. Like, she's not like, oh, why, like, what is this place? Let me look around. Let me try and figure out where I am. Let me try and figure out what the gist is up. Why does this man want me here? Nothing. She just takes it at face value. And then she's like, oh, the fake can't lie. Sis, where did you hear that? Did they tell you? Did they verbally tell you that they could not lie? Because you're just going off this idea and without any confirmation. And then the crazy part is when she finds out that they can lie, she doesn't sit there and be like, hmm. Maybe they lied to me. Maybe I should think about some things. Maybe they've lied to me this whole time. Like, maybe I should consider that as, like, a, a thing. She just is like, wow. And then moves on. I'm like, sis, you just found out that they can lie. So, I would start to, start to ponder, is there something they could have lied to me about? At all? But no, she doesn't do that. She finds out that there were other people in the castle the whole damn time. They were glamouring her. But, like, I get, again, I just, it just, the favor we started out with, and then the favor that went into the Fey world, I feel like we're two different people. Because, sis, you were not on guard. And then she was like, I'm so guarded. You're not. You're not as guarded as you think you are because you're not, you're not taking this seriously. You're stuck in this world where you are, you are below the food chain. You are at the bottom of the food chain. And you are acting like you're not. And it's frustrating. So we're going to move on. Alright, and then the last book I have on this list is Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. Listen, I was all for Tessa Bailey when I read Fixer Up. I really liked that book. And then I liked It Happened One Summer. And then I got to this one and I was like, what is this? This is terrible. I, I hated it. It was about this girl this guy and they grew up in, no, yes. They technically grew up in the same town. The guy is a part of this rich family that owns one of the vineyards in the town. It's like so, like Northern California. And the girl, she runs her grandmother's floral shop. Um, because her grandmother died and I guess left it to her or whatever. Or not a floral shop, it's a landscaping business almost. So, when we start out, she's one, she's breaking the law. Like, she's going in and she's, like, stealing stuff from people, which is weird. Um, so they meet. I just want to talk about this. So, like, the thing that I hated the most was the romance, which was the point in the book. Because I was convinced that there was no chemistry. There's no way these two characters had chemistry at all. Because why is it that the first time they meet, the first thing he notices is her boobs? It's not like, oh, she's beautiful. He's like, oh, she is a good rat. This is the romance you're trying to convince me of? Like, it would be one thing if this was like a hookup romance, blah blah blah, whatever. No, it wasn't. They were supposed to be, she was supposed to be in love with him from childhood or whatever, or when they were in high school. They were supposed to have shared a kiss at some point in their childhood, and then he just doesn't remember her. First thing he notices is her boobs. But okay. And then he becomes like obsessed with her, but like, in a weird way it was like weird and then she's like adamant like she's like secretly writing him notes and it's just weird like I didn't really like this story I didn't like the romance it was weird it was doing too much there's too many elements as well going into play and I just I had to wipe my mind of it and I did and I'm glad I did those are all the books that I disliked in 2023. I'm glad it was just this little amount, but one disliked book can go a long way. If you liked the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave those in the comment section. Let me know some books you disliked at the end of 2023 or just in 2023 in general. Let me know so I can stay clear of them. 
And if you are not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. You are awesome flowers in the world, won't we?